Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 5th of October. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You made us in your image and have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. May your Spirit renew our lives as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 67 God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall revere him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In the face of Jesus Christ, your light and glory have blazed forth, O God of all the nations. With all your people, may we make known your grace and walk in the ways of peace for your name's sake. Amen. A reading from the Passion according to St. Mark. Immediately while Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man, arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Jesus then said to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me, as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All my enemies whisper together against me. Against me they devise evil. Even my bosom friend, whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted his heel against me. Yesterday we celebrated Francis of Assisi, one of the world's favourite saints. I couldn't resist reflecting on his life and ministry today. Giovanni di Pietro di Bernardone was the playboy son of a rich merchant of Assisi. He nicknamed his son Francesco to celebrate business success in France. As a young man, he lost the taste for the wildlife, embraced the gospel in word and deed, renouncing wealth and status for a life among the poor, serving them, wandering like Jesus, evangelising and attracting followers. He was only 45 when he died in 1226. He renounced personal property and wealth inherited from his family, depending on what God provided for his journey, bringing light, joy and understanding into people's lives in return. Stories were told in Franciscan communities of his preaching 
shedding light on the life-giving nature of the gospel. He founded several religious orders committed to a life of poverty and celibacy, obedient to God and each other. Franciscan friaries choose their leaders and aim to govern by consensus without hierarchy, challenging in a hierarchical church. Francis imitated Jesus and the disciples in poverty and simplicity of living, sharing the word of God as an itinerant preacher, relying on hospitality wherever he went, begging food and a bed, giving himself totally to cherishing and encouraging those he met, especially the sick and poor. It's said he kissed a beggar with leprosy, lonely and destitute, shunned by society, to remind him that he was loved and lovable. When he came across a roofless, ruined church and stopped to pray in it, he was moved to start a rebuilding project with his own hands, taking one fallen stone and returning it to where it belonged. He went on pilgrimage to the Holy Land and returned to Italy importing ideas to reproduce life-sized Bethlehem nativity scenes in churches, turning sacred art from wall frescoes into life-sized images, sometimes using live animals and people. Likewise with the Way of the Cross, though passion reenactments had have been around for centuries earlier in some places. This was to remind people of that real things had happened that mattered to them. Intense meditation on Christ's passion was so central to his life that signs of Christ's wounds appeared on his body. Visiting the Holy Land, he went into no man's land between Muslim and Christian armies battling for control, asking to meet the Muslim leader face to face. His reputation as a holy man went before him and the audience was granted. They spoke about God, peace and friendship. Francis prayed for a change of heart. It was a remarkable instance of interfaith dialogue enhancing those already occurring between Jewish, Muslim and Christian scholars in Moorish Spain. What led Francis to change his way of life so radically is unclear, but a change of heart made him into a man of deep prayer and action, at home, in the company of people and alone in wild nature, in silent adoration, so calm that animals as well as people approached and felt safe with him. His life shows us what signs and wonders are achievable in life by one totally given to walking with God. As we recall how our holy brother Francis of Assisi taught us to contemplate our Saviour's passion May we be reminded that we too are called and sent out into the world to reveal Christ's love and mercy to others in word and deed. We thank you, Father, for the tasks you have entrusted to us. Help us each day to become more aware of opportunities to serve you in those who are needy, mistreated and excluded. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Maker of all things and giver of life, inspire us to rejoice in and cherish the sacrament of creation, through which we come to know you and Jesus our Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember your world broken and divided by poverty, injustice and conflict, and make us instruments of your peace. We pray for the needs of the world, especially those places where people live daily in fear of violence and oppression. Yemen, South Sudan, Darfur, Syria, Niger, Ukraine and Russia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your compassion, Lord, have mercy and grant healing to those who have entrusted themselves to our prayers, especially Fides, Lorna and Geoffrey, Audrey, 
Jill, Father John, Michelle, Holly and Max, Callum, Jean, Ian, Philip and Doreen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.